Hello guys, how are you all? I uh, I'm just working out how to <laughs> work lives because I wanted to show you what you guys what I'm up to. Um uh let me try and share my screen with you first before we go in to our main content. So it's day eleven of the journal reading, but before that I want to show see if I can share my screen with you in any way. I'll work that out later. Um, so I wanted to ask you guys a question, okay, because I love to keep myself busy because I find the further I get away from my addiction, the more work I need to put into myself personally to keep myself busy and occupied. Now, today I went down to my local charity shop because in all honesty, the last couple of days have been quite low for me. Okay, so rather than sit there thinking about what can I do, I want to try and use more time productively. So I thought maybe helping out in a local charity shop might work. So I'm going to start off in the hospice this Saturday. So uh, one to five o'clock. So that should keep me occupied because at the moment, you know, I don't have my diary here. But if you could see my diary, it's actually stacked. And I'm also doing this here as well. A level two in mental health problems so that course is like never ending so I'm only on module um, 1b of that so there's 11 modules so please forgive me for my tardiness you know <laughs> I'm either coloring in meditating or doing something to generally chill myself out because you know these lives are great but I am still a recovered addict, so I still need to keep myself busy to ensure that I don't slip back into any complacency. I hope you guys can hear me okay. Oh, and there's another thing that I've showed you this about 10 times. This is like its stage. Still not done. Hopefully I'll get it done by the end of this week. <laughs> Here's hoping. Here's hoping. Um, welcome to anybody that's joined. Um, it's great to have you here. Thank you for your commitment and your diligence. I do appreciate it. I'm going to put a wee uh, question up at the end if you don't mind answering it because it would be nice to get an idea on what you guys also do for uh, chilling out or to relax or if you had a hard day, you've had a, maybe a low mood day, you know, what kind of, what, what mechanisms do you use? What techniques would you use to pull yourself out of that? Because it's too easy to sit in that and you know, get absorbed in the emotion in that moment, you know, but we have power over our thoughts to control how we think, okay? So it's really, really important that we have things constructively set up in our lives that do enable us to, you know, get past that, right? So this is day 10 of the journey, okay? And as I, our day 11, sorry, day 10 was yesterday. <laughs> getting mixed up in my days. Again, this is a journal I'm reading from. This is the journal I kept throughout my rehabilitation. And I, I think I mentioned to you yesterday that, you know, coming up to my decrease, yesterday was day 10, yeah, I'm correct. So this is today's today 11. And, you know, it's, it's getting even shorter now, you'll see. Okay, so this is day 11. No, wrong side. <laughs> This is day 11 and this is the 30th of December, okay? And this is when we go to the Lapwing Lodge. Now, I've still been dropped down to 12 milligrams of Suboxone, you can see here, okay? So this, again, I was worrying about going up to the lodge. They take you away out of the place and they put on like a disco. You have a New Day's dinner together, which we all cooked. Well, I cooked, actually, because someone pissed off. <laughs> And I didn't even get any dinner that day either. Um, so that was the time that I suggested that we we wrote the letters and we'd thrown them into the fire. So that was either mentioned in day nine or ten, I believe. So I'm just going to jump straight into my reading and confirm what I'd written on this particular day. So we're on day 11, 30th of December. And we went up to Lapwing Lodge, which is an old Boy Scout uh, school, I believe, or... A haunt where they go to take the Boy Scouts. Uh, it's an old lodge um, 
with two wings connected by a main community hall, which is where we had all our check-ins and everything like that, all of our activities, all our letter writing, anything that went on, we had dinner together, that was all done there too. So arrival at Lapwing Lodge, I shared in needs and feelings group about things I'd like to change in the new year, right? We all have new year resolutions. <laughs> we often don't keep them. But it is always good to set yourself goals. Always look forward, okay? Don't look back. Always try and improve yourself in even the small, small, tiny things. If there's something that you can do to improve, you know, I was talking with someone the other day, getting fit doesn't have to be hard, okay? NHS does recommend that we do 30 minutes three to five times a week. You can start getting off a bus two stops earlier and walking. And it doesn't have to be a brisk walk, it can be a slow walk. And you can actually work up to you to achieve your fitness targets, things like that. Setting yourself small goals keeps your mind focused and helped has helped me so far in my recovery. So I would suggest and recommend finding something that suits you. So when I'm talking about things in a new year I'd like to change was one of the most and remain clean. <laughs> so as you all know, that didn't happen. I did relapse um, during that time, but um, I'll go into that later in the time because that's going to, you know, right now I don't feel physically able to cover that or really talk about that. I was just watching a TV program with my mum called The Fall and it had a scene in it where someone was being resuscitated and he had the tubes down their neck. I had to fast forward that. I, couldn't, I, I practically could not watch that whole episode because I was you know, traumatised from the death. So, you know, stay tuned for that. That will come. But, you know, this is me coming down off my Suboxone, which was hellish, right? As, as I'd mentioned, people in there, you know, had been around the block. They've had years of addiction, a lot more than me. They've maybe had several attempts at rehabilitation and they knew that what was going to hit them. I, on the other hand, it was my first time getting clean or attempting to get clean and I had no idea the severe effects of drug misuse would have on my body later on in life. I really did not. Had I have known or even had an inkling of how I would have felt, I would never have touched my first recreational drug. Like never, beyond any means. So setting goals is important. So we've done a bit about setting goals for the new year. I had a call with mum who had a witness through her prayer and my sudden change in attitude about staying there, wanting to get clean. You know, I was, again, you're going to see a lot of my mood go up and down and up and down per day. So that's generally what happens during, a, 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 like coming off any drug, your emotions fluctuate, they come back down. You, there's, you get good days and you get bad days, but the, clo the further away you get from your addiction, the better mindset you'll have and it's just having the strength and the courage to push through that initial you know it is hellish i'm not going to lie it's the worst thing i've had the experience and it takes all mind and body and willpower to push through this when your body's screaming at you just use drugs just use drugs you know whispering in one ear i'm your friend i've helped you through this and that it hasn't all it's done is kill steal and destroy so you know, you know your opponent, I mentioned this yesterday, better than what you think you do. If anyone is watching this and struggling, I highly advise you time to get help because if you've came to the place where I came to, no one can tell you when to stop. It's only when you're ready. If you think that you might be ready, I suggest that you go to your local CAT team, which is your um, substitute prescribing teams wherever you live. That's how I got my recovery journey started. Uh, they put me on a substitute drug, which is Suboxone, and that's why I went into rehabilitation to wean myself off that. Okay, so I didn't realise the impacts that drug would have on my body. I was on that drug for four years due to cocaine use. Couldn't stop taking cocaine. My cocaine use came from maybe it started off recreationally, you know, there was a huge point in my life where I never touched drugs, where I was all about education, what do you need? And I did move from Scotland, to, from Ireland to Scotland, 2008, between 2008 and 2019. It was meant to be for uni, but I ended up staying there. And, you know, it's just, it's good to concentrate on the things 
they're productive in life okay so my productivity was going over to scotland to study and then due to stress and other life issues that i never sorted out that i took from here okay from belfast over to glasgow with me i started to use drugs to sedate the pains that i was feeling emotionally okay i was emotionally scarred and emotionally damaged and my only go-to thing that my body knew cured that sickness or that pain is drugs okay so that's why i got stuck in a vicious cycle of cocaine use and it would be maybe every other weekend turning to every weekend turning from a friday you know right through to a sunday night blinds closed literally sitting up with maybe 10 grams the whole weekend and not sleeping that's how severe i got that use started to impact the job I had. It started to impact my productivity. It started to impact my mental health. I started to get paranoid. All these things came alongside this drug use. Meanwhile, I just used to counteract the effects of mental health, but it was actually the drugs that were making my mental health worse. So I can now sit here now seven months clean and tell you that drugs are the worst thing for mental health okay there's no point in going to a doctor's and getting put on mental health tablets for depression or for x y and z if you're not dealing with the root causes that caused your addiction in the first place and for me there was numerous things there which i'll cover later on okay but if you think it's a time now's a time to get clinic effects then i would highly encourage you to go for it because you know it is not unattainable it is a hundred percent doable if i can do it anybody could do it because i was the one person that honest to god thought i would die an addict i thought that was my lot in life just to take drugs and kill myself um so my mom got a witness that everything would be okay through prayer and i had a conversation with her and my mood had picked up slightly and i think it was because of the change of getting out of rehab and getting somewhere new but we were still totally remote we were out in like a field somewhere and it was like far far away so it was kind of still jail but at a different place <laughs> it really was like you could you could you could have left if you wanted to but like that would have made things hell of a lot worse so staying making the most of it they did say to you what you put into lapwing lodge you will get out so if you want to sit here and not take part that's completely up to you but you'll feel very isolated and it won't be productive if you want to come with a mindset where you want to fully participate and get involved in activities that's where healing will occur and i threw myself into everything we had a disco on christmas um night and i was like dancing with glow sticks and everything it was outrageous and after that i came back to the the rehabilitation center feeling a new sense of life because i had experienced my first christmas and new year clean for the first time and they even gave us wee certificates and everything which is really really nice so after my mum had that call i was talking with actually i had no idea I was being assessed the day and admitted the next day so before i went in you know my rehabilitation happened so quickly like i can't believe how quickly i got into rehabilitation people think it takes ages if you're in the glasgow area it's actually very easy because they have an allotted number of beds specifically for uh, glaswegians or people that live in the g30 postcode or g postcode area so i think i believe phoenix futures hold 10 positions just for glasgow people and you get in through your um local cat teams so it's that easy you know but i didn't realize like because i i'd spoken to them about the the potential of going into rehabilitation because i knew i couldn't come off the drug uh suboxone which was my replacement in the community so they put me into um phoenix to come off and do some work on myself um and which later led to a relapse spot. We'll talk about that near the time. So all in all, the change in my attitude and surrender to the program, that was the main thing. When I surrendered to my situation, when I accepted I was an addict that needed help, that I was in a desperate situation, that I was hopeless, when I accepted that, that's when the help really truly came. So again, there's something to be said by needing or wanting to get help you can't be forced into getting help you need to want that help yourself and i was so low at that point that i just thought no that's not working it's not it's not the life i want to lead anymore so sure enough 
when you're ready, you will be able to do it. There's no doubt about that. That's pretty much all I've written. Now, there's one wee post-it note just here, and I'll read that to you. And it says, it was from my worker. She wrote, what do you have to lose? What do I have to gain? So she was questioning and, and putting to me, what's more important, your life or death? You know, what's more important, your family or your job? You know, because I chase jobs for a lot of times uh, to preoccupy myself again as another addiction. You know, addictions come in many forms. I had quite a few addictions, not all drug related. They were throwing myself wholeheartedly into work so that I didn't have to think about the pain that I had endured. You know, it was trying to keep myself occupied in the flat, you know, mind numbing stuff just to try and help myself when all I really needed was to deal with the root cause and that actually helped fix everything else. That's why I'm able to sit here now today and I'll be eight months clean on the 15th, 14th of November. Yeah, 14th of November. So, um, no, I was eight, seven months clean on the 14th of November. So on the 14th of December, I'll be eight months clean. So that for me is a huge achievement because I was that girl who thought I'm going to die an addict. You know, so to have that inkling of hope and still be here today. Now, I was speaking with my partner earlier on and I was going to show you before and after photos. He'd taken some photos of me in hospital, but I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that with I've spoken to him and we both decided it was better to leave that until the relapse happens when I'm going to talk about the relapse which to be honest with you that's all had been that day or this one sorry this one I don't know my left from right here so it starts to get quite scarce if you can see and this is when I was like two weeks in the program and there you go this was two days, this is the 2nd of January, and I'm already on eight milligrams and my antidepressants still. And you don't know antidepressants knock you out until you're actually off the drugs. <laughs> Again, day 13, it's very scant as well. And that's because I was going through, through loads of ups and downs and I had my notice to quit appeal coming through for hiding medication off here. I had all that stress to think about when I got back from Lapwing Lodge and, you know, there was so much stresses to deal with in general and, you know, recovery in itself isn't that, you know, it's not a tiny thing. It's a massive life changing decision to make. Um, but yeah, uh, I didn't realise this, but my recovery was not going to happen in Phoenix Futures. My recovery was going to happen when I moved back home to Ireland, when I got my act together. So I'm going to put up a wee uh, poll here, just on the front. I'm going to ask you, what do you like to do to relax? If there's anything that you feel there that you would gravitate to, so do you like to colour in? Because that's quite, that's part of mindfulness. You know, do you play an instrument? Um, do you have a hobby that you do that you take your mind off things when you're in a sticky situation? You know, um, it doesn't even have to be an addiction as in like drugs. It could be like overeating. It could be hundreds of things. There's loads of different things. It could be the need for even fitness. You can get an addiction and people will say that's a good fitness. It's still unhealthy. Any addiction is unhealthy. I don't care if people say fitness is a healthy addiction. You can throw yourself in from one addiction to another. You can substitute your addiction from a good to a good or a bad to a good or vice versa, but it's still an addiction. And what we need to learn as recovering addicts is to find a good balance in life. Okay, so don't do things to the extreme that are good, but are still habits. You know, you need to find a, a good balance. So just if you can do that, we pull for me after the video ends. Guys, thank you so much again. Okay, so... Just a reminder, if you've watched live, hashtag live. If you've watched on catch up, hashtag replay. Please, when you watch this video, if anything resonates with you, show some integration with the video. Show loves, likes, whatever you like. Um, if the video content resonates with you, please share it because you don't know who in your network you could target and help them. Um, and please also share and like, follow the page if you haven't already done so. Um, guys, you have been amazing. Thank you for sticking with me through this journey. I sincerely appreciate it and I love you all. And I hope you guys have an, an amazing evening. And again, thank you to everyone who took the time to pop on this evening. I sincerely appreciate it. I'll catch you guys tomorrow for day 12. Bye, guys.